This is an x-ray of the knee. In between the femur and tibia, there is a cartilage. There are two types of cartilage. There is articular cartilage and there is meniscus in between. Meniscus is a fibrocartilage structure. The meniscus carries type 1 collagen. It is triangular in cross section. There are two menisci. The lateral is circular and covers about 70% of the lateral tibial plateau. The medial is C-shaped and covers about 50% of the medial tibial plateau. The lateral meniscus is more mobile. The medial meniscus tear is about three times that of the lateral meniscus. Function of the meniscus, shock absorption, load sharing, joint stability. Causes of meniscal tear. Twisting or jumping or change in direction, especially in sports or skiing. The tear may be degenerative as in older populations. The tear also may occur in association with arthritis. Symptoms. Pain at the medial or lateral side of the knee. Mechanical symptoms, locking, clicking, and swelling. Exam, joint line tenderness is the most sensitive exam. You can also have posterior knee pain. Also look for effusion. It may be difficult to find it, and it may take several hours after the injury. However, in ACL tear, the hemorrhage is more, and it develops rapidly. What is the test that you use? Called McMurray test. Painful pop or click is obtained as the knee is brought from flexion to extension with internal or external rotation. Flex the knee and place the hand on the medial side of the knee. External rotate the leg and extend the knee. Feel a pop or click the patient will experience pain. If you get that, then the test is positive for a medial meniscal tear. Sometimes they may get you on an exam a picture of the lateral meniscus. How do you know that? You can see part of the anterior and posterior meniscus in the same view because the lateral meniscus is circular, while the medial meniscus is C-shaped, so you can see either the anterior horn or the posterior horn, but you cannot see both horns at the same time, in the same view. You can find the popliteus tendon there, so that's a lateral meniscus. If they ask you about the lateral meniscus, or they give you a scenario where you diagnose a lateral meniscus tear, then you need to do the McMurray test in internal rotation. Sometimes the knee is locked, lack of full extension, because you have a bucket handle tear. Differential diagnosis. The clinical diagnosis accuracy of meniscal tear is about 70%. MRI is usually done to confirm the diagnosis or to identify other problems in the knee. The differential diagnosis can be intraarticular problems or extraarticular problems. The intraarticular problems are medial plica, 
OCD lesion, patellofemoral pain, loose body. The extraarticular problems can be collateral ligament injury, especially the medial collateral ligament, pis and serine bursitis, lumbar disc herniation, stress fracture, iliotibial band syndrome, or skiffy in children that will give you knee pain. Blood supply of the meniscus. The meniscus receives its blood supply from the geniculate vessels and its capsular attachment. The peripheral one-third is the most vascularized part of the meniscus. We call it the red, red area. Tear in this area usually heals. Where is the tear? If the tear is in the outer third, which is in the red zone, it is vascularized and it heals. If the tear is in the middle third, that will be the red-white zone, it may or may not heal, probably won't heal. If the tear is in the inner third, which is the white zone, that white zone is avascular and the tear will not heal. So tears in the peripheral, 25%, which is the red zone, heal by fibrocartridge scar. And peripheral tears, less than 4 mm, have a great healing ability. The smaller the rim width, the better the healing ability. Treatment of meniscal tear. You can start with non-operative treatment, especially for small non-displaced tears and for degenerative tears. Send the patient to physiotherapy, give them non steroidal and with persistence of symptoms, you can give them cortisone injection. When the conservative treatment fails, then you will do surgery. The surgery, either excision of the tear, they call it partial meniscectomy, or repair of the tear. You will do excision if the tear is complex, degenerative, or if you have a radial tear. That means you cannot repair that tear. Usually, the surgeon will do minimal removal because the arthritis risk is proportionate to the amount of the meniscus removed. The second method of treatment surgically is meniscus repair. Usually you do that for the peripheral tear because it's vascular and it will heal. And it is better to have the combination of acute repair of the meniscus. At the same time, you do the ACL reconstruction. This subject is controversial. How about meniscal transplant? It will be done in a young patient that had a total meniscectomy, especially the lateral meniscus. And usually you don't do it in arthritis, uh, rheumatoid, in grade 4 chondromalacia, or if you have instability such as the ACL, or if the patient have an axial malalignment, like Varus, for example. And it takes about a year for the graft to heal. Retear of the transplanted meniscus is also common. Another important point is, if you do total meniscectomy, that will probably lead to arthritis in the future. Special situations for the meniscus. In general, the medial meniscal tear is more than the lateral meniscus. In older patients, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is usually more affected. In ACL, if the ACL tear is acute, you will have more incidence of lateral meniscal tears. If the ACL is chronic, you will have more medial meniscal tears. In tibial eminence fractures in children, the medial meniscus can be trapped in this injury. Tibial plateau fractures, if the injury is medial, then it can affect the medial meniscus. If the injury is lateral, it can affect the lateral meniscus.
If you have depression or displacement separation more than 5 mm, you can have meniscal injury. Discoid meniscus. The meniscus is usually larger than normal and it occurs mostly in the lateral meniscus and the treatment usually socialization plus or minus repair of the meniscus if symptomatic. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that video. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.